Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the CW and the Arrowverse as a whole and what's coming in the future. Also, we have a couple of other things to do with The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow and some future updates for the Arrowverse. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so as you guys know, the CW hasn't been operating as usual for quite a while, since the pandemic began in 2020. And now it's 2022, pretty much nearly two years since we got the announcements that, you know, some of the shows were going away and they would be on a break for a while because of the pandemic. And normally every year you would hear about the CW upfronts. I'm sure most of you guys have heard about them because if you're watching this video, I think you keep up to date with the Arrowverse and all the news coming out to do with the shows. But we haven't had an in-person upfront event for two years now. They didn't run it in 2020 and they didn't run it in 2021. However, this is coming from The Hollywood Reporter who is reporting, and I quote, the CW plans in-person upfront return. And so we're going to be reading off this Hollywood Reporter article. I'm going to leave it in the description below. So this is how the description goes. So the event will return to its pre-pandemic home of the New York City Center Theater in Manhattan, May 19th. So I'm going to read through the article and this is how it starts off. So the CW is the latest network to confirm its plans to hold an in-person upfront presentation in May. So guys, you have to note right now, we just entered February, so this is still a ways off. We have March, April, and then we go into May, and it's kind of like mid-May because it's May 19th when the upfront is going to happen. So plans can change as we've definitely learned over the last couple of years, but for now, it's confirmed for that May day. Let's continue with this article. So the Warner Media, Viacom, CBS joint venture will once again hold its presentation on the morning of May 19th at the New York City Center Theater in Midtown Manhattan, returning to its pre-pandemic tradition. The CW, like the other networks, did not hold in-person events in 2020 and 2021 due to you-know-what. Executives and stars from the network will present its 2022 to 2023 linear and streaming programming slate, capping off the traditional broadcast upfront week. And so this comes as the CW's future remains cloudy, its parent companies have put the network on the block, they are selling it, and there have been talks that local TV giant Nexstar might buy a majority stake in the CW. So that's pretty much all you need to know from this article. It just announces the May 19th date that they're going to be holding the upfronts in person. Now, why am I bringing it up and why is it a big deal? Well, the big deal is, as I just mentioned, the CW's future definitely is cloudy. Like, we don't know what's going to happen, and if there is this takeover of a new majority stakeholder, if that is next hour or not, there is going to be changes. And if we get those changes, I think they're going to be announced at the upfront. So that's why I'm making a big deal out of it, because you'll have the executives, you'll have the stars at this presentation in May, and that is where they normally announce, say, if a new show has been picked up, if a new show gets a new season. So you'll see like the Flash season 9 confirmed and renewed at the CW upfront, something like that. And then you also get the announcements of future stuff and maybe some big changes. So, you know, if the CW and Mark Pedowitz have to make changes, they're going to announce it here. But also it's exciting because they will announce which shows have been picked up, which shows they are currently working on. Maybe there's going to be mention of Gotham Knights or even the new show Justice U, which will star David Ramsey and he will direct the first episode and appear as John Diggle. So that's super exciting if there is any mention of that at all. I think it would definitely happen there. And just like in the past where they've previously announced big crossover events at the upfronts, it could be the announcement of whatever is going to happen in the next coming year because we haven't had a big crossover event barring Armageddon, which I do count as a big crossover event, but it's not in the same vein of like Crisis on Earth X or Crisis on Infinite Earths or anything like that just because it didn't air on all the different shows. It only aired on The Flash, but it did have those crossover elements. It had those characters from the other shows. So if we're going to get an announcement, I think it's going to happen there as well. So it's definitely something to look forward to. And don't get your hopes up too much, because there could definitely be big changes with what is happening with the CW right now. However, there could be some exciting news 
coming out of the event from the stars and showrunners of the show who will probably announce if there is a new season, what's not going ahead, and their future plans. Obviously, they're not going to get into that much detail. They like to tease that at Comic-Con. If San Diego Comic-Con happens this year, or if they continue with DC Fandom, we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, I'm just talking about the Arrowverse shows right here, not all of the rest of the network shows. But for now, remember, this is May 19th, so look out for that date. Obviously, we can't go in person. It's like a kind of very personal event, but you'll be hearing plenty about it online as reports come out. So let's move on to the next topic. So this is in regards to The Flash. Now, the other day, there was news from Deadline that The Flash's Grant Gustin is nearing a new deal paving way for season 9 at the CW. You can check out my video, which is in the top corner of the screen right here, where I fully break down this news and talk about what it means, but I wanted to bring it up again because, as I emphasized before, Grant having a deal for only one year despite being offered a contract to return for multiple years, which obviously the CW would have liked and, you know, the showrunners would have liked, it's been done before and Grant in season 8, in fact, only signed for one season and it seems like you know he's signing again so that doesn't mean that the show is ending but I wanted to talk about the potential of season 9 being the Flash's final season. Now there is always a chance that this could be the final season however Grant in the past has said he loves the show and he loves working on it and yes it is time consuming it is a job that he works on for like nearly 10 months of the year he loves it and he doesn't know if he will ever have a job this cool that this many people will watch. Clearly he has passion behind what he does as The Flash and as Barry Allen. But obviously with this one year thing, it does kind of raise a few red flags because he didn't sign that multi-year contract. However, it's just a thing that happens as shows go on and, you know, with offers on the table, you want to take whatever's biggest because why not, right? Like if you guys have say your current job right now, you're going to want an upgrade, you're going to want a pay rise at some point, so why not go for that pay rise rather than signing something that would be less, but yeah, you have to sign for longer, so that's just not really in Grant Gustin's interest, or anyone's interest for that matter, apart from the people hiring him who maybe can save some money, because you know, the show is so popular right now, like Grant is going to be earning north of $200,000 an episode, and he is capping his involvement at 15 episodes, and that shouldn't be a shocking figure, despite some people freaking out online being like, ah, The Flash is only going to be 15 episodes. Well, the last two seasons have only been 18 episodes, and Grant has only showed up in 15 to 16 of those episodes. There is always episodes where Grant doesn't show up, and where all of the other main characters and main cast members have a couple of weeks break, where they can go back home and you know, take a breather because they're filming for so long. So it's more likely than not that this season is going to be like 18 episodes again. There's going to be three episodes without Grant. And that's just going to be how it rolls until the end of the show. Because now the precedent has been set and he doesn't have to do 22 episodes or 23 like they used to do. And he's earning more money. Like, why not take that time off? Especially because Grant and his wife are taking care of their kid who was born in the last year or so. So they're not going to be wanting to work for as long as possible. So I totally get wanting that pay rise, but also wanting to cap it off. So let's talk about the Flash ending. There's no way in hell that the CW, even if it gets taken over by another major stakeholder, is going to end The Flash because it's one of the most popular shows and it does really good for them. Obviously, Superman Lois is probably doing one of the best right now, so similar to The Flash numbers. So they do have another show that is rising similarly to like how The Flash rose when it first came on board. However, it's still going and people still love the show. It's very popular, especially on social media and word of mouth is really, really crazy. Like everyone's always talking about The Flash every week that it's on, every Tuesday night. However, obviously in March, it's coming back Wednesday night, so that's going to be a change. I don't know if that has anything related to this. I don't think it does at all. But basically, to sum it up, there's no way that the CW is going to want The Flash to end, so it's really going to be all down to the showrunner, Eric Wallace. But at the end of the day, I think it's all down to Grant, because if Grant doesn't want to stay in the show, that's the end of the show. It's similar to Supergirl and Arrow. Stephen Amell wanted to leave, so they ended the show. Melissa Benoist wanted to leave, so they ended Supergirl. 
And there's always a chance that the characters show up again. Just look at what David Ramsey has been doing recently with John Diggle and coming back to star in all these episodes. That can happen with the Flash characters after the Flash eventually ends. But for now, I'm going to theorize that season 9 could be the ending. But I'm going to say there's going to be a season 10. I think Grant likes it enough that he's going to stick around a bit longer. But if they wanted to announce season 9 is the end, they would probably announce at the CW upfronts that season 9 is renewed, but it's also the final season. That's what they normally do, and they've done with Supergirl and Arrow in the past, where they say, look, we've renewed it for one more season, however, it is going to be the end. So maybe look for that news if that is in fact going to be happening sometime around that time. Now let's move on to the next thing. So this is coming from Pursuit23 on Twitter, who has had a very good track history with CW related things and, and everything that's happening in Vancouver. And so in a tweet that he posted, he reports that Legends of Tomorrow's crew have been told they'll be back for season eight. So this is the first that we're hearing of this and I do trust this source. I think Ken is very reliable in terms of what he hears. So. I have no doubt that some of the cast and crew have been told that they're going to return for the next season. Obviously, they want to know in order to plan their next steps if they're all going to not have a job next season. Because you have to remember at the end of the day, these people working on the set, that's their job. And like, if they don't have another job, they need to find a new one. And, you know, that's why cancellations are bad because it comes out of nowhere and everyone realizes, oh crap, like this thing isn't happening, I need to get a new filming job somewhere else. So hearing that Legends of Tomorrow coming back for season 8, is that actually surprising? I don't think it's surprising at all because Legends has a very strong fan base. People love the show and they regard it as one of the best Arrowverse shows because that's just kind of what they like and they dislike what the Arrowverse does with the other shows. This is obviously very different right now because of the way that they've kind of steered the show in a comedic direction and also if you look at the legends of tomorrow numbers they've been very consistent for the last couple of years they haven't really dipped at all even though they aren't the highest numbers they consistently get support and people are watching live and obviously afterwards on the cw app and everywhere else that you can get it online so it definitely does the network and the people behind the show actually a good service like i think Maybe they're making some money. I don't think it's that profitable, but it's worth it to continue because they've got a special thing going over on Legends where if a cast member wants to leave the show, they can literally replace that person with anyone else because they've got a rotating cast. It isn't set like The Flash or set like Supergirl where, yeah, you can add in one or two people every now and again, but if you get rid of everyone, it's going to be weird and it wouldn't feel like The Flash. So imagine Iris just left and wasn't back for a long time. And in regards to this potentially being Legends of Tomorrow's last season, I wouldn't bet against Legends of Tomorrow continuing on because we've been saying for the longest time if any Arrowverse show is going to get cancelled or is going to end, it would be Legends of Tomorrow because it doesn't get crazy numbers. However, like I said earlier, it's so consistent and it keeps on being renewed that I really wouldn't say this is going to be the final season. Like... They have a good track record, and I would not bet against it. So what do you guys think about that? Do you think Legends of Tomorrow is going to continue on past Season 9? And if there is an announcement in regards to Season 8 being renewed, I would say definitely CW upfront, unless they want to report it earlier, considering this leak coming out in regards to it potentially being renewed. But that about does it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Remember the CW upfronts are on May 19th, that's going to be in New York. We'll find out all the details online. And what do you think about Grant Gustin potentially signing on for Season 9? And do you think it's going to be The Flash's final season or will it continue on further? And also in regards to Legends of Tomorrow, are you excited that it's potentially renewed for a Season 8? And do you think it's on the chopping block or are you like me where you're saying no? I don't think so because Legends has basically continued on against all odds and, and there's no way that you're betting against it. So let me know all of this down in the comments below. But for now, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos. But for now, please click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.
Icy Road.